requirements so the structure has major importance in guiding the, the design this one is uh, this one is in a high seismic area in Peru there is a high-rise building and a large span foot bridges which are like, the three main aspects because we have like major major requirements in, in terms of the structural in terms of the structure so the, this project is the Lima Convention Center located in Lima in, in Peru. Collaboration when, with ACXT, IDOM, a, a large architecture and engineering firm in, in Spain. And it, we did this project after several projects working on high seismicity areas. And after these projects, we we learn and we understood how to face projects in, with major seismic requirements, which is not uh, something about analyzing um, and calculating the structure with these uh, seismic loads, but it's more important in terms of structural configuration. And actually, this project from the beginning, from the competition, it uh, the architectural concept didn't follow some of the main principles uh, that we can, you have to follow in a seismic area, in particular, trying to avoid large uh, high loads in the upper levels, since it will imply major um, seismic uh, forces. In this case, the large convention hall is located at the upper level, and it has a, an enormous size, about a, a football a football camp in dimension, and it's located up in the upper level and also it has a large opening in the middle of the building which implies a very regular and different uh, uh, levels which implies different location of the gravity center of, on, on each level which is also uh, a major concern in terms of seismic response but uh, since we have major forces and major concerns in terms of seismicity there, there was also a consideration of a very rigid, very, very massive uh, structure, which was formed by a, a macro structure formed by five uh, massive cores, which were located, located for one on each uh, corner and a fifth one in the, in the middle, and that were connected in the upper level by 
by a large uh, triangulated stress. We can see also in this image that allow us also to, to solve the, the span of this uh, column free hole at the upper level. And this configuration, this combination of the of the cores that was that were initially designed as a steel uh, structure, connected with this uh, triangulated trash configured a bidirectional and a spatial uh, rigid frame in both directions that that as you see had the size of the complete building. So it was a major structure to solve major seismic uh, requirements. And that's constituted the main uh, structural concept of the project. Then there are a set of uh, additional uh, rigid frames inter at intermediate levels that allows to control more local effects due to discontinuity and irregularity of the different uh, of the different floor floor levels. But the, the major structural concern was this, uh, this configuration that this is quite uh, simple and, and was integrated within the project from the, from the beginning. And so here this, this course that were initially uh, designed in steel structure, but then in uh, construction, the contractor proposed to, to change them in concrete, as you can see here. And uh, you can see this, this is the, the construction of some of the floor levels. I see here the generated trust that the floor levels were solved in composite uh, construction with the steel beams and uh, steel metal deck, also in terms of reducing the, the self weight of the floor levels. It was also in this massive uh, rigid frames and a couple of pictures of the, the finished building. You see the, the course, the rigid frame, and the large opening. Of the, of the middle of the middle. The Mohammed is tower in Rabat uh, by architect Rafael de la Oz is currently under construction in Morocco. It has 250 meters high and uh, <clears throat> as a high rise building, major concerns uh, comes uh, to face uh, horizontal forces wind forces and also it is located in a seismic area and so, so high, high seismicity as Peru but but no no smaller no not the small no nevertheless uh, it has a particularity that comes from an architectural conception that has a the, the inner core inner communication core is located eccentrically in, in plan which means that the users concentrate in one of the sides at the north uh, facade, while the south, south facade concentrates the, the services. This uh, allows to avoid intermediate technical floor levels, which was the intention in order to have a uniform, uh, to, to search a un, uniform facade and to enhance the verticality of the, of the configuration of the, of the tower, you can see in this. This image. The, the structural solution was a, a classical configuration of tube in tube structure with the inner core inside. It was decided to, to be living in concrete, also for fire protection and, and that and so, and the exterior tube. And then the attempt concentrated in how to configure this structural this structural and exterior tube. Uh, we made several configurations, also including diagrate uh, systems that proved to be uh, structurally very efficient. But uh, at the end, uh, uh, classical read frame configuration was chosen in particular because of the client insistence in maintaining the verticality of the the, the image of verticality of the of the tower, avoiding any diagonal elements uh, within the surface of the uh, of the facade. So this is a section of the of the tower. And you can see here the, the eccentric uh, core and the reed facade that is uh, formed by perimeter beams and and columns. This is also all around the perimeter. Uh, several images from 
from the construction. Now the, the structure finished uh, last month. The same pictures. And we see the, the structure of this perimeter rigid uh, tube. You can see it has quite important uh, perimeter beams connected rigidly to the, to the columns that uh, require also a very massive uh, welding on, on site due to the seismic loads that imply that at some uh, cases you, we had major tension efforts on, on the columns. And a beautiful last picture of the tower within the context of the, of the Rabatte village. And finally, to end with, uh, this is a footbridge uh, actually connecting Spain and Portugal. So it's a nice project to, to end with the, the presentation, the talk. This is a competition we won several years ago and we presented the execution project uh, quite recently. This will connect uh, the northwest of Spain and Galicia within Portugal across the Minho River, near the mouth of the, of the river, the Goyan Villanova de Ferveira footbridge. And actually it will connect uh, two parks, the Fortaleza Park in, in Goyan and the Castellinos Park in Villanova de Cerveira. And it will then create the largest urban uh, inter, intercontinental, inter-country urban park in Europe. So actually, this is the main purpose of the project, connecting this part, these two parts to, together and allowing the communication within the, within, the two, within the two countries. The location, as you can see, is spectacular. It's near the mouth of the, of, of the Minho River. It's an environmentally uh, superb location. And the initial choice was then to, to avoid any intermediate supports in, within the, the river, just located in a couple of, of piers, one on each, uh, on each side, which uh, implies saving a span of around 260 uh, meters. Uh, suspension structure was uh, quite naturally chosen to, to save this, this large uh, span. And as you can see here in the picture, the, the two pylons are located eccentrically within the, within the deck. And, and uh, we only have one suspension cable, which implies that uh, important horizontal forces appear in the deck. These horizontal forces are solved uh, by considering a, a curved uh, layout of the deck in plan. So uh, it acts as an arch to control uh, horizontal forces due to the eccentricity of the cable. We have therefore uh, two funicular geometries that work together and that are related to one to another, which is the, the funicular cable as in any suspension uh, structure as the arch uh, of, the, of the deck that supports uh, these horizontal forces that come from the essential location of the, of the cables. During, during the design process, uh, well, yes, image of the model, uh, uh, yeah, the important thing of this eccentric location of the pylons is that it allows, it allows to visually separate the, the main structure of the footbridge, I mean the pylons, the cables, the hangers, from the deck, and to liberate the view uh, from the deck towards the mouth of the river. During the, the design process, several computational and physical models were, were used. In particular, a very important uh, model was in the, for the form finding process to uh, achieve a, a convenient geometry for this spatial funicular structure combining the hanging cable and the, and the curved layout of the, of the deck. This uh, form finding process was done in collaboration with two professors from the ETH Zurich, uh, Pierre Villiera Punto and Ole Olbrook. And we developed it together 
here is superimposed like several possible uh, configurations and there several attempts were, were done in order to achieve which one was the more convenient by controlling also the maximum uh, efforts in the, in the tension cables, the behavior on the deck, uh, etc. Uh, also, wind tunnel was recently undertaken in Universidad de La Coruña. But uh, we use not only computational models, we also use the physical model. This is a MOLA model, you know, MOLA system, which is a Brazilian uh, system of structural models uh, developed at this in collaboration with the, with the MOLA designer, which is Marcio Sequeira. And this physical model uh, allow us to, to understand the, the concept of the structural behavior and also several local uh, connections and, and as the complexity of, of these uh, nodes that has to allow rotation of the, of the cables in two directions. And also a human model was, was built to physically experience the the load paths uh, in this spatial uh, funicular configuration, the load paths that goes from the catenary cable, here the tension in row, to the hangers, which is modeled by the arms and the bodies of the, of the children that made the, the physical model, and the, the curved the layout of the deck that is modeled by the open legs of the children and is posted one next to the other with rigid supports uh, at the ends. And we'll end just with this uh, beautiful image of the, the project uh, that hopefully will be built uh, soon. So in this spatial structure and liberation of the user towards the it's a simple image for an, an environmental uh, space. It's, uh, very nice. Hopefully we'll be built soon. So thank you very much. Uh, muito obrigado. We have five minutes for my third question in the room. I have one question. <laughs> um, uh, your, um, I think it was your second example. Uh, the reciprocal uh, system. Yes. Um, did you have important horizontal loading? Uh, mm, so we have we have actually the the yes the, the I don't know if I can move that one. You see, well, we didn't have major horizontal forces. This is a uh, just one floor building. It's just one, one floor building, so all, we only had um, wind loads, but not very, not very important. The, the columns, which were concrete columns, were quite massive, also because they related to the sizes of the, of the existing columns within the building. So, and we have here a concrete wall. The only thing is that we needed a, a shear connection of, of some of the beams to the, to the concrete columns on the top. But uh, with that, what that was, that was all. Was not, but, but the laws were not very, very important. Uh, yes, I understand the question. I mean, uh, effectively, with major important horizontal forces, you will have like transfer bending on, on, the, on the beams or will imply to have a bracing within the facade within the roof level. Yes. Thank you for the presentation. Okay. We talked about the seismic, and I wanted to ask about the, uh, I think, uh, Morocco project, the tower. Uh, may I know which type of uh, soil was that? I wanted to ask, did yeah. you consider uh, soil uh, structure interaction or yeah. fix it? You imagine it as a fixed one. Actually, I didn't mention it, but the, the soil conditions were very, very, very poor. So actually, the, the first thing we said when we saw the project and the soil conditions, 
we ask the client to change the location of the of the project because uh, it, it was very very poor conditions uh, and also we had in, initial 15 meters liquefaction liquefaction risk and actually the the foundation were were done with the you know the name in english is deep pines right the deep deep pines that made the, the 70 meters deep so yeah, it was a major, it was a major constraint also for limiting the deflection really and, and we had to to do a soil interaction these conditions no no it, it could be a, a possibility to have isolated it uh, from from the foundations but but actually the, the seismic risk wasn't so important i mean it, it was increased because of this of the poor soil conditions but the the major the major constraint actually was not uh, due to seismic action but was to control the flexion Due to wind, uh, to due to wind loads, for dynamic we implemented a tannet mass damper uh, at the upper level, because otherwise we couldn't control a uh, vibration in one direction. But even with that, we, for controlling the flexion, for avoiding the the facade panels to to break, we, that was the major the major concern during during the, the design process. So I don't know because. Uh, this isolation doesn't make sense because the period, the period of building is already above two seconds, so you cannot really mean anything by that. Right? Okay. Um, thank you very much for the excellent presentation. Uh, I have a small question regarding the building in Lima. Yes. I just want to have a little understanding of this uh, trust and so on. Uh, how how deep was that trust uh, roughly? And mm -hmm. I would want to know the connection that you already used to connect this trust to the shields. Yeah. If I remember right, I think it's, they were around eight meters high. Eight. eight meters high, and the connection with the concrete works was uh, quite difficult. So initially we. We, we say to the contractor not to change them in concrete because of that uh, connection. And actually the connection was made by, by implementing steel elements inside the concrete, uh, the concrete walls and the number of walls and so on. But uh, actually the, the steel elements go inside the, the, the concrete walls. And the elements for this trust, uh, trust elements were one steel sections. Mm -hmm. Most is, uh, I I think they were eight profiles, but with a steel place, so we were making a box. It's interesting to know uh, what you just explained is like you embed mm -hmm. these sections into the concrete wall and how this will behave in the event of a seismic mm -hmm. action is interesting. That's what I asked. Nah. Is you with land with high loads, it's, it's quite a complex problem. Uh, this uh, connection. Because in the Rabat Tower, the contractor proposed that the concrete cores had some large openings for installations, and they proposed that yeah, those large openings replace uh, the concrete, a concrete beam by a steel beam. And also, the, that connection came the design. It uh, was also quite a complex uh, analysis and several discussions from that. Yes. Do we have time for another question? <laughs> Sure. I don't know how to ask for it. Uh, about the project in Kunt, I think uh, you use the shear wall, yes? Or... Yeah, it's, it's, it's more like a rigid frame, but formed by shear wall, by shear walls, if you want. But uh, yes. Because it is a question uh, of a colleague in Iran, uh, you know. Sometimes the shear wall they put uh, outside of the building, sometimes they prefer to put mm -hmm. inside because of the center of the stiffness and center of the mass. And uh, I saw you put in one direction outside. 
and I think in the other direction, inside. Uh, yeah. What do you uh, prefer to do such a process on that type of project? Well, in, in this case, it, it came because of the architectural configuration. Because they are so large that the only way of placing them was were in the corners to liberate the, the, the spaces, both for the opening and for the large uh, hall duration. And, and actually, the, the configuration of that project, of this project, is, is not very convenient, ideally, for a seismic area. And, and it was against what we have been learned, uh, learning in the previous project, but it was the, the architectural concept. So, so we say, okay, let's go for it. But, but then we have to go like a, for a macro structure that can face these forces. So then this uh, massive uh, uh, cores and frames uh, appear. Yeah. Uh, I have a question just regarding the adaptation of the brick. Uh, was the off part lift? Or no. no. It was, uh, it was cut off. So how did you maintain the geometry? Yeah. The, well, t temporary, there was a system of micro pines. Uh, like, um, groups of four micro pines uh, disposed every six meters or so two longitudinal beams and several transfer beams that support temporary the, the brick wall. And then once the, the new concrete, the post-tension concrete wall was uh, erected, was, was built and post-tensioned, then this temporary support was, was removed. And actually, the, the brick be, behaves uh, much better than what we expected. We expect that maybe some cracks will appear, which is quite frequent in, in brick walls. And we weren't very worried about this. Since we, we thought it would settle and then uh, stop. But actually, it was uh, no, nothing appears. So the, the, the behavior was much uh, better. I think that the, the brick construction at that time was much better than the one we do now. And also, we have to say, because we were very worried at the moment of, of post-tension in the, the, the concrete wall. But actually, uh, we were also considering that uh, the elastic shortening of the concrete walls, because we, uh, we actually implied like a uniform compression because this horizontal post-tensioning was around the 10 to 15 millimeters, which was actually more or less the same size that the, the brick facades elongated or reduced due to thermal loads. So we were not implying uh, major concerns that, that what uh, the existing facade was uh, actually behaving for these thermal loads. Last question. <laughs> okay. Uh, in one of the images that you showed regarding this uh, building where you have used uh, triangulate uh, truss uh, around it, okay? Yeah. Uh, I saw uh, one detail where you have part of the uh, steel beam, let's say, underneath, going underneath the floor, kind of carrying... Um, yeah. uh, you're talking about this? This project? No. no. Uh. Mm. Here, second, next to that. Uh, here. Exactly. Ah, okay. So, so. this uh, reinforced concrete beams mm -hmm. under this, or are these parts of the truss? Ah, uh, no, it's the, this, this, yeah. this is the concrete slab. Clearly, yes, uh, but the beam that goes slab. Yeah, no. This is a steel beams with concrete slab, and this is temporary supports uh, because before removing the the propping, there was a lattice, and we said there there were there were jacks to to control the flexion. I don't know that's so the, these are uh, they are just as part of the composite floor, but not part of the truss system. Exactly. Ah. Exactly. Exactly. The truss is just uh, actually the, oops, 
the, the trust has not major, I mean, the, the cantilever is impressive, but we have a double height uh, floral level, so, so that makes around six, seven meters made for the trusses. Trusses support double tips. Okay. Yes. The truss is then supported here on the cantilever of the beams, and then the loads goes to the to the concrete support exactly. So we make the closure here. Thank you for coming, and we'll go to the next one in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.